All right, welcome back and uh, welcome to video number two in part one of my series introducing gameplay in War in the Pacific Admirals Edition. I'm Slip Repeat, and when we left off, we were landing uh, troops in an amphibious assault at Luzon in the Philippines. And uh, here's the combat report you may have saw at the end of the first video. Uh, my apologies for the audio desynchronization earlier on. Hopefully I've fixed that um, a little bit here, tinkered with some settings, and uh, we'll be going on. So I'm going to click Done and watch the, uh, the rest of the turn resolve and kind of explain to you what happens. Uh, you can see in the console there's a repairing ships phase at the end of the 12-hour segment of nighttime. And once again, you get Coast Watchers uh, reporting what ships are in port at somewhat friendly areas, uh, the Solomon Islands, etc. And here we have uh, amphibious task forces unloading more. And naval ships move once again. And um, here we have submarine combat. Uh, the bottom is one of our submarines, the Gar, firing on a light cargo ship. Sort of a historical thing that um, we actually did do a lot of damage to uh, Japan's merchant marine during during the war. And uh, you can see the combat reports in the console here. You can see we're firing 5-inch guns at this ship and hitting it a number of times. And also, each hit kind of shows the uh, the results. Fires below deck, you know, ship side penetrated, upper works hit, fires in control room, etc., etc. And then, finally, at the end here, we have the combat report. Uh, combat reports on naval engagements are actually sort of weird because um, usually they give you, a, usually combat reports give you a good idea of what exactly went down. But here, it only shows you how many shell hits. Um, hit the ship. It doesn't tell you what type of shell. So if you had a task force with battleships all the way down to destroyers, uh, it would just say shell hits, you know, 11, and it wouldn't tell you, um, you know, if those are the 16-inch guns of a battleship or 5-inch guns of the destroyer, or even sometimes ships fire their anti-aircraft weapons at each other, and those would hardly do any damage at all. But anyway, enough about that. Looks like we only had one sub attack this turn, and now air operations start. Uh, the first thing that happens is all the ships and all the land bases send out sort of patrol craft uh, that you've ordered to, well, I mean scout planes that you've ordered to patrol certain areas or fly recon or whatever. And here in the middle of the screen it tells you um, things like if your ships have been sighted or if your, your planes have sighted enemy ships, um, or even if um, your land units actually see enemy planes flying over their location. And it does go by awfully quickly. And um, also these are subject to fog of war. So, you know, you might um, have some inexperienced scout plane pilot saying, seeing one ship but reporting like nine of them or something. <coughs> Excuse me. Wish I had a mute button for this mic. And now we have air raids. What's going on right now, or what just kind of flashed now, was a uh, fighter sweep over one of the islands that Japan still holds in the Marianas chain. And um, here we have more fighter sweeps going o going on. I actually have these planes set to escort our bombers, but apparently they got uh, they got separated from the main raid, so they just perform a regular fighter sweep. And now we're going to have some serious action. We have some Japanese planes trying to uh, get through to our landing force and probably beat up on our carriers some. But uh, I have a lot of carriers in this area, so I don't think this is going to do too much damage. <coughs> and uh, as you can see here, it's really turn-based. Like Each of these things is sort of a dice roll. At probably taking into account things like pilot skill, the uh, capabilities of the aircraft, and the uh, the range at which um, these planes are firing. So you can uh, you can let these things resolve. Sometimes um, when a plane gets damaged, it's damaged too much to stay in the fight, so it'll leave, it'll turn away. Other times, uh, 
it's pretty common knowledge that American planes during uh, World War II were quite durable compared to their uh, Japanese counterparts, so they can, they can take some damage and uh, keep on going. You might notice the uh, numbers of planes continually increase. That's when uh, more of my combat air patrols sort of diverted into the battle. And you can see it go on. Uh, air combat kind of takes place in two phases when you have something like this going on. The first phase is uh, fighter on fighter action where combat air patrols will take on the escorts of the uh, of the attacking force. So I'm, uh, I'm kind of tired of watching this. I'm going, and I'm sure you are too, I'm going to hit escape and uh, go on to the next, uh, the next phase of this. Now you can see um, our combat air patrol planes that got through to take on the uh, strike force. <clears throat> and um, bombers are very fragile, um, especially the Japanese bombers, and these are at least the Val dive bombers are from the beginning of the war. Um, but even these Francis planes are pretty fragile as well. And um, you can also see, you know, once planes get low on fuel, they uh, they withdraw. Um, yeah, they're ones that have probably been in the air longer. You can't really see that. A lot of things in this game are really transparent to the user. You know, it won't tell people, uh, you know, you can't find out what the fuel level of each of your defending planes is. But uh, I'm also tired of watching this, so I'm going to hit escape and go to the uh, combat report. And this will show you the number of aircraft from each side that took part in the combat, uh, when, what altitude they're attacking from, and also the losses on each side. Obviously this was pretty much a turkey shoot. Uh, late in the war, there weren't very many experienced pilots left for the, uh, for the Japanese. Uh, one thing the combat report is kind of weird about is if you actually watch the full combat, you know, play out, you'll see different numbers. So I guess this might be also subject to fog of war, because um, I definitely know you'll say, oh yeah, you only destroyed one plane, but, you know, you might have scouted the airbase uh, the previous day, saw ten planes, and scouted the next day, you'll see three, so it kind of indicates you actually destroyed seven. Uh, so I'm going to close this out and continue on. And I don't want to make you guys suffer through um, watching every single combat uh, combat that plays out here, because I'm sure there's going to be a lot. Uh, we're, we are attacking a very heavily Japanese area, so... It says we destroyed two. We probably got all three, honestly. Some more planes coming in from base in the south now. And one of them actually got through my combat air patrol, so they're going to make an attack on my ship. And uh, you can see the splashes in the water, kind of indicates they missed. But if you look at the combat report, what actually happened was uh, that pilot was flying as a kamikaze. Uh, kamikazes get activated for the Japanese player after certain conditions are met, and uh, these are our conditions that I have met. Here we have a larger raid, 24 planes coming in this time against uh, 19 fighters. So I'm a little worried here. Yeah, 16 got through, so this could be pretty bad. But it looks like these are flying as traditional bombers. So I'm not too worried. Lilies uh, honestly don't do too much. And they only hold, carry uh, 100 kilogram bombs, which against battleships doesn't do that much. What you really have to worry about are torpedo bombers. They can, uh, they can tear up uh, a lot of American ships pretty badly. So I'm going to skip this combat report. And um, you can see here in the combat report, um, you see number of bomb hits on the ships and also the number, the names of the ships that were being attacked. So moving right along. can actually uh, hit escape to kind of skip past a lot of this too, a lot of these messages. But, um, so that'll speed the turn up from, you know, one second per message to half a second. Here's a uh, raid on a ground target, trying to keep the uh, major Japanese base at Rabaul nice and neutralized so they can't uh, fly missions against my shipping in the region.
And obviously, it's uh, it's really simple um, graphically. Don't get much from these animations, but you do uh, get a little bit of an idea of what you did in the uh, in the combat report at the end. And this continues onward, so I'm going to skip past some of it, so you viewers out there don't get too bored. And uh, here I was attacking an airbase, so you can see how many hits I got on the airbase and how many I got on the runway. Here's one of uh, our offensive bomber missions. You can see some seriously awesome B-29s in this raid that are going to tear up the airfield and port in uh, Bangkok. And you can also destroy planes on the ground at, when you attack airfields, which is a pretty uh, pretty good idea to do when, uh, when you have air superiority and you want to keep it. And more attacks on Rabal. I kind of wish these things would um, sort of sync up so I didn't have to skip through so much. <clears throat> Here's an attack on some ground units that are uh, trying to clean up in Java. Again, they uh, they kind of go in separately, so I got to watch both combat, um, you know, both animations. So I'll just skip through stuff until um, find something that we haven't seen before, just so I stay under that you know 15 minute upload limit for YouTube. So you sort of get the idea of what air combat looks like. There's two phases of air combat. There's the first that's in the uh, morning and then in the afternoon. You can also fly night missions, but uh, <coughs> there's uh, but at a significant penalty and also you're more at risk of operational losses because uh, you know when flight had only been discovered about 40 years prior, uh, people still didn't know what they were doing quite yet. And I wish this would hurry up so I can move on to land combat. But it looks like we are... Ooh, looks like I lost a landing ship there, probably from hitting something on the coast. I don't know. Here's the uh, afternoon afternoon air operations. I'm going to just skip through a lot of this. Uh, really astute players kind of want to watch these things, but you know I've practically won the war, so I don't care that much. Another uh, turkey shoot in the Philippines. Oh, and also my apologies for the clickiness of my keyboard. This is probably getting kind of annoying for you. But <laughs> I'll work on finding a better mic location sometime soon. Okay, so that was a short phase there. Now we're in air transport where I'm flying some supplies into China mostly. You can also do things like uh, par drop paratroopers into certain areas and things like that, but I haven't figured out how to do that yet, so <laughs> won't be able to show that to you. Here's more amphibious action going on. But you've seen that already if you saw the first video in this series. And now you have the land move and attack phase. And uh, this shows units marching from hex to hex. I'm going to hit escape to accelerate this a little bit. Basically, it gives you the name of the unit moving and which hex they're moving to. When you're moving units on railroads, it gets really, uh, really cumbersome and annoying. And I just checked my time. I am about out of it. So I'll explain land combat in the third video in this series. See you then.